Hey everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog, and today I want us to do a little bass exercise. I want us together to make a bass line that is generally referred to as the Marauder bass line. Sound wise, this is an example of it. Here's another example. And here's another example. And the point of this bass line exercise together is that if you master this style of bass line, it teaches you so much in general about what a bass line is, what a bass line should be, and how to make your own bass line. We're going to look at how it's programmed, the sound design of it, so the synthesis of it, and the music theory of it. And if you get all of that, then honestly you're in an amazing position to make your own bass lines and variations on these bass lines. So let's keep this brief and hop straight into the DAW. So let's talk about the Marauder bass line. What is the Marauder bass line? Well, first of all, I should mention that it refers to a person, Giorgio Marauder, an Italian guy who was a pioneer at uh, Italo Disco. So uh, basically in the era, sort of between disco and electronic music, let's say, there was a phase in which synthesizers started to be implemented in disco music and people were just discovering this new sound of the future. And Giorgio Moroder, go listen to him on Spotify. He made a few landmark records, especially using the synthesizers that he had at the time, which were all subtractive synthesizers. So what a Moroder bassline is, is a bassline that plays every 16th note, right? Every single 16th note. And on every one of those 16th notes, you trigger a note on your subtractive synthesizer and the synthesizer is programmed to make a little sound that goes bo, bo. <laughs> That's all it is, right? So let me grab a quick MIDI clip here. Let me grab a quick MIDI clip. And this is a one bar loop. And so every 16th note there, I'm going to program a note. Very simple, right? No problem at all. I'm going to select them all and I'm going to shorten them all so there's a little bit of space in between them. Okay, this is just going to make everything a little bit nicer to listen to. Okay, so if this is the basic pattern, right, then let's program a synthesizer that does a little wow sound. And when I teach people synthesis, this is the basic sound that I want them to be able to master. Just the simple wow sound. It's not very complicated, but it is, if you're able to competently do it, then you understand how subtractive synthesis works and you have so much more freedom afterwards. So let's grab ourselves a simple synthesizer. In this case, I will just use the native wavetable here because it's very elegant it's very simple and it does exactly what we need it to do okay for a deeper dive on synthesis do watch this video which is the intro to subtractive synthesis here or this video how to learn any synth they do help go into a little bit more detail what we're doing here but i'm going to go through it now real quick so that we can just refresh our memories remember Every synthesizer has an oscillator, a filter, and an amplifier. The oscillator makes sound, usually a sound that's too big. The filter cuts away from that sound, so to make that sound smaller and darker. And then the amplifier decides how loud it's going to play. And generally, we want a sound that is too big at the source, so an oscillator that makes too much sound, then a filter that cuts that down drastically until it's almost gone, and an amplifier <laughs> that does something that I'll explain in a moment. And the idea is that uh, when you hit a button on your keyboard, that the filter opens up to go from completely dark to bright back to dark, which is that wow sound you're familiar with. And then that the amplifier also goes loud for that duration so that uh, it only plays while the note is being played. So very simply put, let's actually put a uh, an audio effect on there, a spectrum analyzer, so we can see what's going on. Okay, so this is the oscillator section, right? This is the sound source. We're just going to play a note on our keyboard. There we go. What's What it's playing now is a sine wave. It's playing this wave shape. But if we choose a different wave shape, like a triangle or a sawtooth, we'll see that our sound has a whole bunch of harmonics. It's too bright. It's got too much going on. That's great. This is the raw material that we can then hide using the filter. So the filter, we're going to bring it down. And now, see, we've rem we're removing all the high frequencies. And what we want is that every time that we hit a note, that the filter goes, whoa, opens up. And for that, we use something called an envelope. And all the envelopes are arranged here nicely on the right. This particular one is the amplifier envelope. I, for my, for my purposes, I like it more like this. 
Now, let's talk about envelope number two. It looks like this. It basically, the moment you trigger a note, the envelope will go from its minimum to its maximum and then descend down to something called its sustain level. So let's put the sustain level all the way down to zero. And then we can choose how long this movement is going to be. This is the attack and the decay phase of the synthesizer. So now before this actually does anything, we do need to map this envelope two to the filter cutoff. So this movement, this shape, we're going to want it to apply over here to this frequency so that when we hit our key, it goes up and down. You see? So what we do is we go into the matrix and we select envelope two going to the filter one frequency like this. And let's set it to 50%. And now let's see what happens. See that? See that? That's exactly what we want. Every time that I hit the button, it goes whoom. This is perfect. So now let's hit play on this wavetable. Nice. Loving it. Perfect. Now let's select all of our notes. I do control or command A, hold down shift and down. And as you might be able to see here, we're moving our notes more towards the bass area. I think we can go down one more octave that divides all of these frequencies by two if we go down an octave. Nice. Now we are talking. Now we are getting into a Marauder bass line. And that's the basis of the sound design of the Marauder bass line. You can now do variations on this. You can start to learn different synthesizer techniques, like for instance, doing different oscillator waveforms. Or adding unison, for example, to give this sound a different character. But fundamentally, all it is is a subtractive synthesizer going whoa. Whoa, it's not that complicated. Okay, so now what will be great here is some drums. And let me grab the drums that I did a few weeks ago for the techno minimalism video. This video right here. All right, I just imported the sounds of a previous project. And uh, so remember in that project, we went from this to something like this. Cool, now let's add our baseline to that. So I'm gonna call this Marauder Baseline, and I'm gonna go grab that clip, and I'm gonna see what happens when we... Not bad. So what would usually happen with a Marauder Baseline is that you would, over the course of several bars, change the note that it's playing. So instead of having a one bar loop, you would instead maybe have a four bar loop. Could be more, could be less, right? But let's drag it out and let's do command or control J to make this into a, a consolidated clip. So now our clip here is four bars long. And so music theory wise, what would happen here is that once per bar, the chord of the song would change. And so the bass line would play the root note of the chord. So in a lot of songs, a very standard formula, not really in techno, but in a lot of other genres. The standard formula would be that a song has about four chords that always play on a loop and that the bass will play the root note of that chord. So imagine here in our hypothetical composition that we have chord progression that plays one chord for a bar, then the same chord for a bar, but then changes to a next chord and then changes to a next chord again. Those two last ones will have a different root note and we can just use our ear to try and find something that might sound good. Let's move them down and my experience will tell me that these might be good notes to go for. Let's see. There we go. Not bad, not bad. You see how this Marauder baseline idea can be very versatile and powerful. And now let me turn off also some of the more melodic elements from this. Yeah, nice. And now let's see what we can do to change the timbre of this Marauder baseline a little bit over time. So let's go back to our instrument and let's let's increase the length of the de of the decay here. See how that injects energy. Also, if we move this one up, 
Excellent, that's super fun to tweak with. That's super fun. And if you remember from my video that's called painting with sound, if you put something like this through a big delay and reverb, you actually get these movements smeared out over time in a way that's very satisfying. So let's do that. Let's put a little delay on there. And I'm gonna make it a ping pong delay with a very high feedback. Not that wet. I don't want it to overpower the original sound. And then I'm gonna put a reverb on there. And I tend to like myself a Valhalla room just make it mega long and like 30% wet. So it's very present. Let's see what this feels like. Now when I open this up, see how that movement continues on? Because there's this big room around the sound, right? You see how that movement smears out over time? There's this wall of brightness in the distance. And so we can keep tweaking this however we like. We can add the resonance up. It's gonna make it more nasal. Very cool. And there you have it, the Moroder baseline. If you followed everything that I did up until this point, you are a very capable bass programmer, then you are able to program a bass. You know how to sound design it in terms of synthesis, and you know what notes it should play in terms of music theory. By the way, if you want to refresh your music theory, watch this video or take my Foundations of Electronic Music course, where I go from absolute beginner through to intermediate level producer. You'll find that on my website. And you know how to inject energy into this with your performance. You know which parameters now to tweak to make it sound a bit more alive, to make it sound a bit more like it's evolving in your track. If you do use this, show us on the Discord channel what you did with this. Follow my techno project Torque and my melodic house project Face the Sun on SoundCloud. And until next time, stay producing, be good to one another and take care. Bye bye. Caffeine, the creator's friend.